Hey yo, MC commuters, and welcome to another episode. We got a good one for you today. I really, I really hope anyway. Quick reminder before we get started that this ride is brought to you by Aerostitch. Uh, Aerostitch makes commuter suits like this one and a gaggle of other accessories and whatnot for motorcycling. Plus, they support the show. So, um, if you want to check them out, go to aerostitch.com. The reason I'm sort of giddy today uh, is probably obvious by now, but uh, this is the topic of today's show, uh, which I'm very excited about for a number of reasons. That is a Ural Gear Up. It's a Russian sidecar. It's 750 cc's. Uh, there's gonna be so much to talk about, so we should just jump right into it. Da? Da. There we go. First into life. While we're getting the gloves on here, we'll talk about some of the stuff, because, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff. So obviously a huge uh, sidecar in there. One thing I think is interesting is they got sidecar brakes, very smart. You can see it's uh, plumbed in um, with the brakes from the bike, so it's linked when you get on the brakes. We'll talk about how that works in practice. There's a trunk, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Uh, air pump, there's a jerry can. There's also a shovel. Uh, there's some gear up accessories. I'm really glad that uh, Ural got, uh, got me the gear up model. Uh, to ride on this MC commute because I think it's my favorite one. Uh, it does not come with uh, the uh, windshield accessories for the bike or the sidecar, but it does come with the fuel can and the shovel uh, and the two-wheel drive, which is pretty nifty. So let's do it. What do you guys say? All right, so uh, <laughs> it's hard to even go over the basics because like what's basic really? about all this. <clears throat> um, it is a 750 cc air-cooled uh, opposed twin down there. Looks like a BMW. That's no accident. We'll talk about that. I don't even know uh, <laughs> what other statistics to lay on you guys that uh, that are like relevant or even sort of comparable to other motorcycles. It is, uh, a pretty interesting vehicle here. This is some of my crap that I stuffed in here. Uh, that's not for any reason except that I need to take that stuff to the office, so I stuffed it in there. I didn't put it in the trunk. Um, I don't know, just because that was easier to stuff it in the footwell. But, uh, but I think it's pretty cool that it has a trunk. Some of the suspension components here, you get the that uh, Earl's fork set up there. It's kind of a funky suspension majigger. I recommend uh, I don't know, there's probably like a Wikipedia article about it or something like that. It's a little bit uh, different setup than usual. Everybody's got a red light right now. Oh my god. You get the green light, I get screwed. Son of a gun. The school children caught up to me for crying out loud. <laughs> the school kids are yelling at me. That's something that'll happen on a Ural. Not so much school kids yelling at you, but people just uh, people just want to talk about it. They it's something about a sidecar that just brings brings people out. It is without doubt, far and away, not even close, um, the best conversation starter of any motorcycle that I've ever ridden. <laughs> I mean, you know, really fancy Harleys or. Uh, Ducati Panigales, and I rode home on a BMW HP4. Nobody really, nobody really cares. A year old though, boy does everyone want to talk to you. What I haven't gotten from anyone is, uh, I don't know, I feel like I, I wanted there to be like a, an old Russian guy who's like, I had same model when I was teenager, but I haven't actually gotten that. Just people saying, what year is that? Which is a good question. No, it's basically brand spanking new. Doesn't look like it. Hey, there's a guy with a BMW across the way. He knows. He knows that opposed twin life. One of the reasons I gotta be excited about this thing is uh, I grew up with sidecars. My dad had sidecars and he also had BMWs. I actually raced a vintage sidecar for a while. It was a BMW R75. Uh, engine um, with a sort of custom 
chassis. It was made to look like um, a sidecar of about 1970. And uh, yeah, it, uh, so R75 BMW had the same basic engine, really. Uh, Air-cooled two-valve pushrod, 750cc opposed twin. And like I said before, that's no accident because Ural um, basically reverse engineered a BMW sidecar sometime after World War II and uh, been cranking them out. So that's why it looks just like a BMW. Anyway, a bit of a soft spot for me uh, with sidecars first of all and uh, with uh, either BMW air-cooled twins or, uh, or even knockoff air-cooled twins. <laughs> that still counts. This is the part of the commute where I would normally split lanes, but that's something that you can't do with the Ural. So, something to keep in mind. Uh, for those of you that live in California that might be thinking, cool, I'll get a Ural and I'll get to, get to work really fast. That's not really how it works. This is also part of the commute where I oftentimes talk about seating position, so I could do that for a minute. It's surprisingly comfortable, the Ural. Um, you know, it's sort of basic handlebar and a big, huge flat seat, but a big, huge flat seat that's really thick and uh, the bike doesn't lean over, so no need to have the foot pegs up high or anything like that. So it's, a, it's actually a pretty comfortable vehicle to ride, I have to say. Going through those corners back there, though, it does um, make me realize that I do need to talk about the fact that it's not like riding a motorcycle. I know that sounds pretty obvious. <laughs> Compared to a motorcycle, it's pretty high effort um, to steer at all. I mean, the bike doesn't lean and you're, and you're fighting against a sort of asymmetrical weight slung off to the right side of the vehicle. Um, and that means uh, when you're accelerating, it pulls to the right, and when you're decelerating, it pulls to the left. Um, it's sort of like a natural thing that sidecars do because of the, like I said, the asymmetry of it. Because uh, the power is coming from that rear contact patch, which is off the left side of the whole kit and caboodle. So, um, nothing to concern yourself with is the point. It's just the thing that they do. But yeah, it feels very, very, very different than riding an actual motorcycle. Range Rover with a sequined license plate holder. What's up, Orange County? What's up? The Ural doesn't just look old either. It uh, basically is old. It's one of those, uh, you know, you got your you got your Triumph Bonnevilles and Thruxtons that are, um, you know, those are modern engineered motorcycles. They're just made to look kind of old, but they have. Uh, you know, fuel ejection and ABS and trash control and modern suspension and so on and so forth. The Ural is not uh, one of those vehicles. Uh, there is no trash control. There is no ABS. Um, the transmission, for example, you have to be pretty deliberate with. This isn't one of those transmissions that you're going to just click through the gears without using the clutch. It's, a, it's an old school gearbox and it takes some some patience and some getting used to but that being said I do like how uh, I do like how mechanical the uh, the Ural feels you know you feel like you're really riding a, a true machine you know <laughs> it's almost like there's little workers down in there that are forking piles of coal into I don't know, creating steam and this making this thing go crank, crank, crank down the road. It's uh, it's very, very rewarding if you're a gearhead and you're into this kind of thing. It's pretty fun to ride. Taking a little bit different way to work today. No freeway. Well, not very much freeway anyway. We'll get on the freeway just for a minute. The Euro will go on the freeway. Um, it's not a big deal, but uh, but I thought I'd take the scenic route just to give. Uh, you know, more chance to to discuss, and also because uh, the sort of 45 to 55 mile an hour roads are um, more in the Ural's wheelhouse. That's kind of its happy place, not uh, 405 freeway in Orange County. It's only a four speed, uh, the Ural. Um, pretty simple gearbox, and 
Uh, it doesn't even have a fifth speed. And Ural says, uh, the, I think it, I believe the website says the uh, maximum recommended cruising speed is uh, 70 miles an hour. Um, and that, uh, I did go 70 and maybe we'll get a chance to this morning. Uh, and it works fine, um, but I always, a, a little bit of mechanical sympathy always comes to me. I always think, man, I can just hear the valves spinning up down there. Um, and I just wish I could shift into fifth. But, uh, you know, like I kind of said before, if you get in a Ural, you're not, uh, you're not doing it for the cutting edge technology of, say, a five-speed gearbox um, or advanced electronics or, um, or any such like. Uh, you're doing it for a very, you know, unique reason, I'm sure. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. And, uh, yeah, cool. Just, uh, just died here, the Earl. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna try to do something about that. Maybe it's out of gas. Try not to get run over. This is fun. Okay, just a quick push here. Luckily the Ural died just uphill of the gas station. So we're gonna uh, hope this works. Okay team, you know, ju just a minor setback. We found out that the fuel light doesn't work, um, which uh, happens occasionally. I'm not too upset about it. I'm just gonna reset the trip meter here, or try to, there we go. Motorcyclist magazine policy, just so you guys know. And I think it's smart actually, just reset, uh, reset trip one every time you fill up. That way you get a feel for how many miles you can get and uh, you're not as reliant on any fuel gauge or fuel light situation. Lesson learned all over again. One other fun thing about the trip meter is that it does hundredths of a mile. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why it does that, but um, yeah, it does. It's at 0 0.05 right now. I've gone five one hundredths of a mile since the gas station. Anyway, back to it, I suppose, uh, to the MC commute. We could talk about the dash here for a minute if we want to. Um, it's got a bunch of little options here. It got uh, ride time. Voltage, max speed. Oh yeah, you can show the speed digitally too if you want to. There's your odometer. A thousand miles on this bad Nelly. Okay, we're gonna go on the freeway here for just a minute. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm already in top gear. Going through a right-hand corner, which you gotta kind of gotta be careful with with the Ural, because the sidecar can come up in the air like that. There we go. But as long as you're careful, it. Um, handles just fine. Okay, here we go, 60 miles an hour. Merging onto the freeway, everybody be nice to me. And uh, sure enough, you know, it cruises along just fine. Again, not a lot of effort, it goes straight pretty well. <laughs> um, yeah, not, not bad, all things considered. Considering it's a 40 horsepower engine that was basically engineered just after World War II. Not too bad considering it's pushing 700 pounds of metal down the road. Definitely not quite as agile in traffic as a motorcycle either, as you would expect. But yeah, I didn't mean to avoid the freeway uh, because it was like, you know, horribly scary or that the Ural can't do it, because it totally can. Okay, now we are approaching a right-hand turn. And what happens in right-hand turns with a sidecar, um, if you're nice and careful, nothing. Uh, if you're not careful, what can happen is the sidecar comes up off the ground. Can you see, see what we got going on here? Um, and you can pick it up and balance it. <laughs> it's pretty fun, there we go. Call that fly in the chair. So you can get in over your head um, with the sidecar, obviously that's uh, something that's totally possible to do. But with appropriate planning, uh, it's, uh, it's totally reasonable. Let's see, what other nifty, uh, Nifty tricks does the Ural do. Oh yeah, it's got this little button here. Uh, you flick that, the spotlight comes on. You can point the spotlight <laughs> Kind of fun. Person in the Honda Accords probably. Wondering why it looks like there's a 
World War II arrow stitch soldier behind them. Blinkers, high beams, kill switch. It's uh, pretty bare bones. Steering damper, which uh, is probably pretty smart on a sidecar. They can be can be a little unstable, uh, but this one's pretty good. Try and get it to misbehave. Come on, get crazy. Nope. So I didn't do any uh, off-roading on this commute, obviously. Sorry about that. Um, but the Ural's actually pretty, pretty capable uh, going down a trail. It does, the gear up has uh, the two-wheel drive option, um, which we'll check out in a minute, which is pretty rad. Uh, it's got a drive shaft that goes from the rear wheel over to the sidecar wheel, so the sidecar wheel will also power the, um, the rig if you want it to. It's also made out of whatever, the just pure steel, all of it, I think. <laughs> um, so it's very, very rough and tumble. Um, you could probably tip it over a cliff and go to the bottom and start it up and ride it back up if you wanted to. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Well, one other thing I was going to talk about were those, uh, those disc brakes. Um, oop, same colored vehicle. Respect. So yeah, you, when you, um, when you press on the rear brake, the sidecar wheel also engages the brake, which helps balance the bike out when you, when you slam on the brakes. Um, just using the front brake like you would normally do on a, uh, on a motorcycle is like a little bit less wieldy on a sidecar. Um, and uh, no, you can't back it in, but <laughs> you can still have fun with it. <laughs> it's the classic uh, kind of fun that you have with a sidecar is with the sidecar wheel on the outside of the turn. So sort of ballast it. <laughs> All right, a little bit late to the office today, so we. A little fleet of bikes out here. <laughs> it's only a four speed. It does technically have five speeds though, because check it out. Ka clunk. Yup, we're backing up. Yeet, yeet, yeet. Pretty nifty, right? So there you have it, kids. The Ural Gear Up. It's a handsome devil, is it not? Pretty cool. Broom, broom. Sound like your uncle's 1975 BMW? Yep, that's pretty much what it is. All right. Oh yeah, and here's this, uh, here's a drive shaft. See it? Drive shaft coming out of the rear hub. And it goes over to the sidecar wheel. Pretty cool. Uh, depending on which roll you get, it starts at uh, $14,500, I think. Um, this gear up with the two-wheel drive and the, uh, some of the other mumbo jumbo is um, $16,500, which is not super cheap. I think we can agree, um, but it is pretty darn cool. It's a very, very unique motorcycling experience. Okay, well, I think that's just about all I can do for you guys. I hope I covered everything. Okay, all right, I'm running out of things to say. I'm going to go inside. See you guys later.